I was lucky enough to be at one recording session for uh, China Crisis when oh, I was in uh-huh. the room in Hawaii, with, right? You lived in Maui yeah, for a at, while. Yeah, that and that that is how that interview came about because they were recording just about a a few doors down at mm. uh, George Benson's studio. I've forgotten the name of it, but I'll, uh, I'll put George that Benson. up on its own. I'll put that up on its own. I added it to like some scuba slides, and I did like this whole like thirty minute thing. But I'll upload that interview. Um, tell tell our listeners what that was in case they haven't heard it yet. Um, you were in Maui. You're a radio DJ. You're a radio DJ okay. on Maui. So I was at KLHI, and this was mm-hmm. my dream job. I'd worked hard, and I'd had other dream jobs too, but because I, I was the luckiest radio guy in the world, and if I, I I won't take credit for it, it was just a series of unbelievably lucky breaks. And now I'm doing a morning drive show on Maui. Right. So for a radio guy, does it get any better? Uh, no, <laughs> unless you want to be really huge, unless you want to be Howard Stern, in which case, yeah, you don't get to be on Maui doing it in a storefront. And the storefront had the studio right there on the walkway with a pane of glass between you and people. And sometimes people would come up and make faces at us, you know, or whatever. Uh, we had some weird incidents with that, but uh, it was like to, it was, we were in a goldfish bowl in that on that show well one day i'm looking out the window in the middle of saying something and i suddenly stopped because walter and roger were walking right past the window and i jumped to my feet said to my partner hold on for a second and i ran out and i said guys i'm doing live radio will you come in right now you know just come in and let's talk you know and they both looked at me they looked at each other and then they looked at me and said okay sure you know you know how roger was Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you say, say you say it kind of offhand, casual, but but with with enough amusement to make you realize that he was getting the humor in the situation. So they came in, and we just uh, you know we just took it from there. We ad libbed for whatever it was, fifteen minutes, and it destabilized my relationship with the program director so much, who I think was a, another guy who was really jealous, and he's dead, so I can talk about it. But uh, uh, he fired me. Because, because partially because I had done the interview with your dad and Walter. And I mean, the island was talking about it. Maui's a really small, especially then, a really small place. And yeah, you, uh-huh. you people know each other and they talk to each other. They see each other driving on the two lane road. They stop the car and talk, you know, talk story. So, so I love it. You ran out, you grabbed them and you brought them to the studio. Yep. And uh, both of them were uh, in their top form. It was, uh, you know, 88? a beautiful day. That would be 88, and I, I'm going to guess that the mar- the month was March because I was fired on April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah, what a present from my program director. So anyway, so that's, that's how that happened. And it's 10 o'clock, and we have some wonderful guests that have happened to wander into our studio. This doesn't happen to us very often that we have uh, an assemblage of talent, the likes of which, well, am I embarrassing you guys yet? <laughs> yeah, not yet, but I think if you keep going... Uh... <laughs> We've got Walter Becker, who uh, gained great fame and prominence in Steely Dan. And we have another man who uh, also did the same. Both you guys have won so many Grammys, I I don't even want to think about it. That, of course, is Roger Nichols, who uh, I I know he's taken at least three. Is it three or four? Three. Oh, only three. That's right. You didn't win. Uh, Yeah, that one year. But uh... (laughs) he was was disqualified by the morals clause that year, I think. Uh... (laughs) Well, uh, let's not go into that now because we are a family statewide radio station as they say this is the morning show too right it's what's left of it i don't know if you guys heard any of the show this morning uh we got baked by a heat wave and then uh we had a tremendous argument with our chopper pilot who came in and molested cat hargis on the air and well there was a lot of mean stuff that had that no that can i be your next chopper pilot See, Kat really makes this whole show work. Without her, we're just a bunch of goons sitting around. But, uh, no, listen, guys. Uh, first of all, what are you doing here? Can you give us a concise description of uh, your current activities? Uh, I live here. Uh, and uh, Roger is just visiting for the day. Uh, he wanted to take a vacation here in Hawaii, but uh, he didn't have enough money to come for more than one day. <laughs> right, so the plane for it was fine, but I just couldn't afford the hotels. The hotels are too expensive, so he's <laughs> flying back this afternoon, and uh, then I'm just going to go back to my house. Actually, we were over here uh, uh, playing around at uh, 
uh, Lahaina Sound, which is right down the mall from you guys. In fact, we were just looking for the Mexican restaurant, and we wandered in here by mistake uh, because <laughs> well, you guys had those funny hats on, you know? Yeah, they're dunce hats. We usually wear them after we, we screw <laughs> right. up pretty bad, and uh, we, we made a number of uh, tremendous errors today, not the least of which is uh, allowing me to even be on the air ever. Because I, I, <laughs> right. No, really, if you only knew how many times people have been saying to me, don't talk so much, play music. Uh, without any further gabbling, I just want to know, what is the status of your projects that you've got going here? I know you, you were uh, just discussing a little bit before we went on. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, a band, uh, an English band, whose name I'm not literally divulged, that we're uh, trying to bring over here to uh, do their uh, next album at, uh, at Lahaina Sound, and that maybe will happen in a month or two. And uh, who knows, after that, the sky's the limit, right? Yeah! Vaudeville may come back, you know. John Denver, I heard John Denver mentioned Roger. What's up? Yeah, we're uh, working on a new album in, uh, recording it in Vancouver because John is uh, starring in a new TV series that they're shooting the pilot for on CBS, and they have to do that up in Vancouver so it looks more like Alaska. It's about the Alaskan bush pilot. And uh, so on the weekends, we're recording. So I have to fly to Maui during the week and uh, uh, Vancouver on the weekends. Well, I have to do that. Yeah. We're, we're sitting over here with one of your uh, one of your works, I think. A diff that you guys spent a lot of time on. Uh, and I was just wondering, what's your, a, a what's your favorite? A lot of money, cut? too. What's your favorite? <laughs> on the Steely Dan album? Yes. Sorry? we got Gaucho here. We have Gaucho. This is, I believe, the uh, official last Steely Dan record. <laughs> that, that's right. That was the official, <laughs> official, uh, unofficial. The official last, last Steely Dan album. You know, I had my entire uh, brain erased uh, by the process of making that record. So, uh, so I we, can't really remember can't. any of the cuts that are on it. Um, <laughs> Come on, you can remember at least one. One well, particular favorite well, one. Let's just play the first one there. I mean, we wouldn't have put it first if we didn't think it was good, right? You've got a great point, uh, and it happens to be one of my favorite ones, too. Before we, before we shoot it, though, could you just describe how many takes it took to do Babylon Sisters? Oh, um, I think we need a higher math. To, uh, <laughs> that's right. That. We can't express that in ordinary numbers. We'd have to uh, use a lot of exponents and little weird squiggles and things to describe how many uh, takes. It took two years to, in the studio to make this album. Two. I think it ultimately was one too few, is uh, the way it always <laughs> Yeah, right. If, if we had just gone one more take, I think we really would have had something. Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, there's too many questions I'd love to ask. I know a lot of listeners love the work that you guys did on this uh, a particular track especially um you know how many mixes just just to give us a rough idea uh, and to give the listeners a shot at comprehending this a mix is of course what you get after all the basic tracks and all the sweetening stuff is in there now you've got to sit down and decide what the levels are going to be on all those lovely what, what was this uh, how many track of course it was uh, is this well this was 64? 24 no this was just 24 track but there were a really? lot of things on each track um, so you'd have to switch between uh, guitars and vocals and saxophones all on one track. <laughs> we we never stopped until yeah. all 24 tracks were, were, were completely were full. Completely full. That's yeah. how we we knew when the record was finished. And uh, uh, we actually got the uh, gold floppy disk award the first time it was ever issued to anybody for uh, for the number of mixes it took to uh, complete this album. In fact, Roger has the gold floppy disks at home on his uh, wall, or actually on the wall of the van that has all his belongings in it right yes. now. So it's moving. Walter, uh, I know you play bass and guitar. Um, yeah. Which which instruments were you on this particular track? I don't think I played anything on this track. <laughs> Come on, my favorite one, and you didn't play on it. You've got to be kidding. No, I don't think I played on this one. Get the liner notes. One, uh, get, get them out. Get the liner. I don't recall playing on this one, and I'm probably right about that. Uh, but, you know, my... Uh, no my, liner notes, guys. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have any time left for liner's notes by the time we we're finished with this <laughs> but i'm sure that my uh, mark is all over this one all in right. one way or another all right all right uh, any do you have any final comments or uh, you know uh, curses or you know maledictions anything really crazy you'd like to shoot out into the entire state uh well i i just want to tell the entire state how uh fortunate i am to live here in hawaii and uh, how fortunate Roger is to be here for, for uh, all day today. Listen, we want Roger to be uh, our main man here at the Superstations. Uh, I've tried many times to get him in here, and uh, I uh, don't know what else to tell you. I just, I just want him to you know, stand around and make jokes. That's really that's the main thing. <laughs> that's Roger's uh, long suit, actually, yes. <laughs> okay, Walter Becker and, of course, Roger Nichols, both of whom worked on every Steely Dan record ever. And Yeah, I don't know. 
It's really been a great uh, experience having you both here. Thanks a lot for dropping in. Okay, uh, can you pass the uh, salts and chips, please? <laughs> <laughs> FM 101, AM 65. Why not? And that's that.